Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to your math lesson for today. We have finished. I don't know about you, but I felt like that decimals unit was lengthy, I think, especially with Wednesdays off, right? It seems longer than usual. But anyway, we finished our decimals unit, and we're moving into our next unit, which is our data analysis unit. So we're going to be talking about things like mean, median, mode, and range. So for today, you will need your 5B textbook, your 5B workbook, your math resource finder, and paper and pencil. And for today, when I say paper, I know some of you are doing work in your notebooks, which is great. Um, but for today, we're going to be taking some notes that are going to go into your math resource finder. So you want to have at least one piece of paper that is a piece of loose leaf on which you can take some notes. Okay, so go ahead and get those things and then come on back and we'll get started. So as I've been saying repeatedly, fifth graders, we're going to be using our warm up as opportunity to get ready for our upcoming quarterly exam, which again is a ways away still, but um, continuing to get practice so that by the time the test comes around, you are ready for it. So question one is asking you to fill in the blanks with, uh, and again, we should be doing this with the non-zero digits. When we're doing expanded form, the zeros don't need to be represented. All right, and then express as a decimal correct to two decimal places, and I wanna direct you to that piece of information, correct to two decimal places, because that's going to impact the answer that you have. All right, go ahead and try those, and then come on back and see how you did. So as we're looking at this number here, our first non-zero digit is the five. So we need to have five here, but again, the question is, is it five ones? And no, it's not five ones, this is five tens. And so our what we write here needs to show that it's five tenths. So you wanna write 50 here in this first blank. Three tenths has been given to you. And then our other non-zero digit is going to be that six. But again, it's not six ones, it's six what? Tenth, hundredth, thousandth, okay? Six thousandths, so we need to show Ugh, I'm running out of, I'm gonna have to move that. So it's not correct. So six thousandths, we need to show that there in our answer. So you should have 50 here and six thousandths, which is 0 0.006, okay? Number two, remember when we're doing expressing mixed numbers as decimals, that whole number should just stay the same. The seven is a seven, so you can kind of put it off to the side. So now we need to do our division, but we're going correct to two decimal places. To remember, we've been going over this concept quite a bit as well. You need to divide to the third and then round, okay? So lining up, stacking up our decimal points. Eight does not go into five, so we put a zero. It goes into 50 six times. So six times eight is 48 with a remainder of two, and we bring down our zero. It goes into 20 twice, remainder of four, and then we bring down that zero, and we get 40, okay? So now we're rounding to the second place. So the five is gonna tell us we're gonna add one more. So the correct answer here is seven and 63 hundredths. I know we can find an exact answer, but this, is, this particular problem is working on a few skills, okay? It's working on expressing a fraction as a decimal. It's working on, do you know how to do division with decimals? It's also working on rounding. And so they're asking you to do multiple things. So even though you can find an exact answer, you're supposed to be giving it as a rounded answer. So as I've been saying, if you're having a tough time with any of those concepts, it's a great idea to come see us during office hours and we can talk you through some of these uh, problems that you'll see moving forward. Okay, with that in mind, our objective is going to be finding mean, median, mode, and range. These are forms of average, types of averages, okay? And so we're gonna be working on how to find those. So first and foremost, we need to be taking some notes. So that piece of paper that I told you to get ready, you'll wanna have that out. As we're going through these notes, remember, Pause, okay? I will not be waiting necessarily because you guys are, can be in, be in control of how much time you're needing for these. So as soon as you see the full definition or the full instructions, I guess, written out, you can pause. So what we're gonna do is go through all 
of the definitions first, and then we're going to go back and practice what that means. How do I do it? Okay. So with that in mind, I'll flip you around and we'll get right into it. Okay. So you want to label your notes mean, median, mode, and range. So start there, pausing, and then come on back when you're ready. So for mean, the way to find the mean is that we find the sum of all the values and then divide by the number of values. So again, pause and then come on back. Reminder, of course, that sum is addition. And again, we're gonna practice what this means in a moment. So median, there's kind of a few things here. Median is the list of, or, or, sorry, not the list. For the meaning, you're going to list the values in numerical order. Numerical order, meaning least to greatest or greatest to least. Either way is fine. The number that appears in the middle is the median. I also say, and yes, you need to write this note down. When there is an even number of values, there won't be just one middle value. There's actually going to be two middle values. And so you find the median by determining the mean of the two middle values. So go ahead and pause, copy this down, and then come on back. So we'll do, I mean, you might be reading those words and thinking, I don't know what that means. That's all right. We're going to do a practice example right off the bat. That's going to give you a chance to figure out what that means. Okay. Mode. For the mode, we determine which value appears most frequently. This does not mean the number that is the most, the greatest, but which one shows up the most often, most frequently. This value is the mode. Note also that there can be more than one mode if more than one number appears most frequently. There could also be no mode. If no number appears more frequently than any other number, then we'd say there is no mode. So go ahead and pause and get these notes and then come on back. Lastly, we have range. This is not technically a form of average, but it's something that we look at when we're analyzing data. So to find the range, you're going to find the difference between the highest and lowest value. This is the range. Remembering, of course, that difference is subtraction. So pause and get these notes down. So fifth graders, you should have all of these notes now ready for your reference. But you might be looking at this and thinking, okay, but I don't understand what this means. And that's great. We're going to do some practice right now. So with another piece of paper, and again, this paper, the next page could be something that's in your notebook or maybe a whiteboard. That's fine. Um, but this you want to keep in your math resource binder. And I would keep it handy so that you can reference it as we're going through today's work. Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to look at a set of data. Okay. So we're looking at students and ages. So these are their names, these are their ages. So for mean, we're gonna start off with mean. So remember the, the instructions that you just copied down. It says to find the sum of all the values. So that's our first step, find the sum of all the values, which means we're gonna add these all together. So sometimes students like to group things into tens or multiples of 10, right? So 12 and eight we know is 20, seven and three we know is 10, four and eight doesn't make a 10, but we can still add that together. Four plus eight, we get 12. So now we can add all of these together. And this one we can probably do a little bit more quickly, right? 20 plus 10 is 30 plus 12 is 42. So this is step one. Oftentimes students stop here, but we don't wanna stop here. We're not done yet. Step one was to find the sum of all the values. Step two now is to divide by the number of values. So now we have to go back and divide one. How many values are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to divide by six. 42 divided by six is seven. That is the mean of this set of data is seven. Okay, again, we added all the values together to get 42 and then we divided by the number of values. All right, next up is the median, median. 
if you look at our notes, the first step for finding the median is to list the values in numerical order, okay? So looking at least to greatest. Oftentimes, students forget this step and they just go with the two that are in the middle here, but this is gonna be incorrect, okay? So we start with which number comes least? I see three, and maybe you wanna like check it off when you've written it down in the list. Four, seven, eight, eight again, and 12. So now we know we have all the numbers. So remember then we wanna find the one that appears in the middle. But I already gave you this hint. If there's an even number, which six, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's even. We have to kind of look at the two middle ones. We wanna find the average of the two middle ones and we have to do that with mean. So we add them together. Seven plus eight is 15. And then we divide by the number of values. One, two, there's two values here. So. Seven times two is 14 with a remainder of one. And remember, we can add a decimal point and a zero, bring it down, two goes into 10 five times with no remainder. So our median is seven and a half or seven and five tenths. The nice part about the work we do for median is it makes it really easy to go right into mode because we've put them in numerical order, right? So now we can see, are there values that appear more frequently than others? And the answer is definitely, yes, there are, right? There is, I should say. I see two eights. All the other values appear only once, one three, one four, one seven, and one twelve, but there are two eights. So eight is our mode because it is the value that appears most frequently. All right, lastly, we're going to work out our range. Remember to find range, we wanna find the greatest value, the least value, and we subtract. So our range is nine, okay? So this is what I mean for all of these steps that we're gonna be going through today. So we'll keep on practicing. We're gonna move actually to your textbook to do this next set of practice. But I would keep your notes handy. It will be your reference as we're going forward. So looking in your textbook, we're gonna be looking at pages 122 and really more specifically 123, okay? 122 is gonna walk you through what we just practiced. It's gonna to talk to you about the different types of averages, but 123 is going to allow us to do some practice with it, okay? So you should have paper ready to go so that we can do some of this practice. So this is sort of tricky, a little bit tricky today because we see Timothy asked the students in the chess club their age and he recorded the information in what's called a line plot. And so we wanna make sure we're understanding that this X means that there's one nine-year-old. These X's mean one, two, three, four, five, six, 10-year-olds, one, two, three, four, five, 11-year-olds, and one, two, three, four, 12-year-olds. So as we're finding the mean, we have to add all these together. Okay, all the ages. So you shouldn't have a sum of one here and a sum of six here and a sum of 11 and a sum of 12. That would be, sorry, I shouldn't say. You should have one and six and five and four. We have to actually determine. So in this case, I'm just gonna write this out and you should do this along with me. Don't write in your book. But if we have one nine-year-old, that means there's the age of nine, right? One times nine is nine. We have six 10-year-olds. So if we're finding the sum of their ages, six 10-year-olds would be how many years total? Six 10-year-olds is going to be 60. Now we have five 11-year-olds. What is the total age for five 11-year-olds? Fifty-five. And now we have four 12-year-olds. 
What is the total age of four 12 year olds? 48. Okay. So as we're finding the mean age of the people in the chess club, we have to find the sum of all the values. So we actually have to get us started. We have to add up all of those values. So I am just going to do them all in one problem. You could choose to do that differently, right? You could choose to add them one by one so that we're building our way towards that sum, but we're gonna, we're gonna add these together. That's step one, okay? So five plus eight is 13 plus nine is 22. So two, and then we carry. I again think if you could make tens, that'd be a great idea. So I see six and four together make a 10, plus five is 15 plus two is 17. So the sum of all the values is 172. So that's what we're going to divide. But the question now is what are we going to divide by? Remember we need to divide by the number of values. In other words, we have to divide by the number of people in this chess club. So how many people are in this chess club? It's not four. There are four ages represented, but that's not the number of people. So we have to count each of these X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So we're gonna divide by 16. So 16 does not go into one, but it goes into 17 one time with a remainder of one. And we bring down our 12. 16 does not go into 12 at all. So we have to put a zero here and then again, keep our division going. I'm gonna scoot this up to make sure that you can see. Now we have to add a decimal point and add a zero. This is a good point to say that yes, means and medians, those can be decimals. So now we bring down our zero. 16 goes into 120. You might be thinking, well, for sure at least six times. If we're estimating 20 goes into 126 times, but I think we could go even higher to seven. Seven times six is what? 42, so we hang on to our four. Seven times one is seven plus four is 11 with a remainder of eight. We're still not there yet. We're gonna add another zero, bring it down. 16 goes into 80 how many times? Let's try five. Five times six is 30. So we put a zero and hang on to our three. Five times one is five plus three is 80. And we're done. So our mean for this set of data is 10 and 75 hundredths. Okay, one down. Let's try, so we're seeing B is getting us ready for being able to do the median. It's asking us to make a list of the ages in increasing order. So they've started it for us. We see a nine. How many tens should be in our list? There should be six tens. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I see one, two, three, four, five, six tens. How many 11s should be in our list? Ooh, I'm getting out of this. Five. So we have five 11s and then how many 12s? Yeah, four 12s. Good. So this is the first part of B, right? They're wanting us to put this in numerical order because that's what's gonna help us actually with a couple of things. It's gonna help us with median and it's going to help us with mode. So as we're thinking about median, you want to find the middle value or the middle two values. And, and one way you could do that, fifth graders, is kind of one by one, crossing out from each side. So one from the left, one from the right. 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 And we see that there's actually two values. but Conveniently, those two values are 11. 
The average of identical numbers is just the number, right? If you added those two together, 11 plus 11 is 22. 22 divided by 2 is 11. So that's going to be true any time you're finding the average. If the numbers are equal, their average is the same thing. So our median here is 11. How about mode? This one, actually, it's kind of nice to look at here. If we're, the mode is the number that appears most frequently. What number is that? It's a good visual representation here. Yeah, 10 is our mode because 10 appears most frequently. And as a bonus question, what is the range here? So remember, when we're finding range, we take the greatest value, 12. We subtract the least value, 9. So what's our range here? 3. Okay, fifth graders, we're actually going to move away from the textbook now and do a, at least one more practice set um, with ones that I've made up to get us at least one more chance of practice before we move on to our, I guess I should say, your practice work and then our homework. All right, fifth graders, we are going to be working on finding mean, median, mode, and range. Actually, we're going to do two sets of data. So this is our first one. These are marbles. These are the colors of those marbles and how many of each color there are. So mean, if you're looking at the notes that we took, you're going to find the sum of all the values and then divide by the number of values. And remember that word sum means addition. Okay, so again, you could try to group, and I've actually seen students do this, and it kind of works, where they say, okay, I'm going to add these two, 13 and 7, that makes 20. Um, I see 5 and 5 makes, oops, not 5, that makes 10. So we're kind of seeing we did the 5, the 5, the 13, the 7. Mm, like 12 and 12 make 24 and then we have nine left so sometimes students will do this work on the side and they'll try to group things together um, that make nice even numbers or a quick addition or our tens or multiples of 10 so that's an option that you can do so we could do this kind of in our heads right 24 plus 20 is 44 plus 10 is 54 and nine more would be 63 so that's one option. Another option is just to make sure you're adding them all, right? Write them up or do two at a time, ready to just keep adding, adding, adding. I think the thing that's nice about this is you're doing fewer addition problems and you're also working with uh, nice even or round numbers that are a little bit easier to add together. Okay, so we have a sum of 63, which is the first part of finding the mean. The second part is to divide by the number of values. So we have to count how many values are there. In other words, how many digits or how many numbers are we looking at here? Not digits, how many numbers? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 63 divided by seven tells us that our mean is nine. Next, we're gonna look at median. Remember when it comes to median, the first step is to list them in numerical order. You could probably at this point cross the numbers off because once you have your numerical list, you'll be able to use that same list for the next two parts of it as well. So starting with the least, I see a five. If I were to be prudent, actually, I think it would make sense to have left a little bit of space on either side of the list so that if I've missed them, I can add them in pretty easily. A five. Next comes seven. Then nine. 12, 12, 13. And we can see we crossed out all these numbers, so we know that we've used them all. So now remember, we're looking for the value that's in the middle. So we kind of, one option is to see how many there are and then look for whatever is in the middle so that you have an even amount on each side. Also, we can just kind of cross out one from the left, right, left, right, left, right. So what's our median? Nine, that's what's left. Okay, good reminder though, there could be, actually that's not true. If there's two values in the middle, remember we find the average and the mean of those two, okay? 
Okay, mode, we wanna look at this list and see which number appears most frequently, not the greatest number, but which one appears most frequently. So if we look at this list, we're looking for repeats. There's actually two repeats. So remember our mode, there could be more than one mode. And in this case, there is our modes are five and 12 because five appears twice and 12 appears twice, okay? And now range, you're going to subtract. You're gonna look at the greatest and the least and do your subtraction. So actually this list is kind of nice as well because you know the greatest and the least. So 13 minus five, and what do we get? Eight. So we see this is our mean, median, modes, and range. So fifth graders, I would like you to look at this set of data. You're going to pause and do what we just did. You'll find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. So go ahead, pause, give it a try. Come on back and see how you did. All right, so remember, step one is to make sure that we're adding all of these digits together. So maybe you tried one of the strategies that we had talked about where you're kind of grouping things off to the side. Maybe you just added them all together. But regardless, the step, first step of mean is to find the sum of all these values. Then you want to divide by the number of values. So how many values are there? How many numbers here? One two, three, four, and five. So you're going to divide by five. So you should have found that the mean is 11. Next, we're gonna find the median. So the first step is of course to put them in numerical order. So eight, eight, 12, 13, 14, 14. So which one is in the middle? 12, so 12 is our median here. This list also helps us find our mode. We see that there are two eights, so the number that appears most frequently is eight. And then finally our range, we take our greatest number, we subtract our least number, and what do we get? We get six. So this would be your first checkpoint, fifth graders, right? You worked on this on your own, and so you should see, how did I do? Did I do well? Or maybe I should go and chat during office hours for a little bit of extra coaching, which is great. Um, however, maybe you're feeling like, okay, that went well. I'm going to move on to my practice work. So note that today, your this is your practice work today, is your workbook. And you're going to be looking at pages 116 through 117. So I just want to talk through this to make sure you're understanding. This is a little bit like some of the work that we did earlier today where we had those X's, but in this case we have tallies, okay? So what we're seeing is how many of the people on the bowling team are aged nine? Four of them, okay? So this is like a nine, 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 and nine. 10, 10, and 10. 11, 11. 12, 13, 13. So as you're organizing the data, these will be all of the values that you're working on. So then when you find the mean, you want to use this list of values, starting with the nine they've given you and then all the way through. So you have to add all of those up. Or another option would be to do multiplication. So you're saying nine times four is 36, and you'd write that value. 10 times three is 30, and you'd write that value. So you'd find each of them, and then you can add all of those off to the side here and do your division. Okay, this list though, you should be able to use to do B and C for your mode and your median. And then you'll have the mean at the end. I would maybe try to do my work up there. Um, for this, it's pretty much like you would see, right? We see these values, you're gonna organize them and then you'll find mean, median and mode from that data, okay? And same here, you're given these times they are decimals, so it's a little bit trickier, but you know how to add decimals and you also know how to do division with decimals, okay? So it shouldn't be too bad. It just requires a little bit more careful work and making sure you're lining up, right? So this doesn't have a decimal point in it. So four, we'd have to remember it's 4.0. So these two pages are your practice work 
Um, you're going to complete that, and then there's a key included, and then your homework is going to be an attachment. It has two sets of data for you to practice mean, median, mode, and range, and then it also has a couple of review problems to keep that fresh in our memories. So finally, fifth graders, as we've been talking through this and these notes that we've got here, right? Thinking about how you're gonna keep these, keep track of these. So usually I tell students like mean, finding the mean, that's usually the most work, right? It's kind of like heavy lifting. There's a lot of adding and then dividing. And so I often tell the students to remember this by saying it's mean to make me do all that work. That's so mean, okay? Median, think about a median that goes down the middle of a road, the middle of that road median. Median of your data is going to be in the middle. It's the middle value of your data. Okay. Mode sounds like most, but it's important that you don't think most like greatest, but most frequently. The mode appears most frequently. And then a range, think about a mountain range where there's high points of the mountain and low points, high points and low points. And so range, you're taking the highest and lowest, like a mountain peak to a valley and you're subtracting, you're finding the difference between, okay? So those can be some ways to try to help you remember as you're thinking about mean, median, mode, and range, okay? Um, so go ahead, you're gonna be doing some work on this. I'll be looking at also showing your work, right? So especially when you're doing the mean, I need to see the addition and the division. It'll help me out if there are mistakes too. So make sure you're showing that work when you submit it, okay? Come see us during office hours and good luck, fifth graders.